Not a whole lot to say about these guys that I didn't already talk about back when we first met them on the road to Terminor. Uh... Oh, one thing I talked about in my hour-long discussion with a black screen is that uh, the reason I gave Jundar shields to the Lizardman sergeants... Well, for one, I think they look good on them, and it's an upgrade to the turtle shell shield that they normally would be using. But here's the thing. The swamp is adjacent to the beach where the humans in Jundar had their big war a long time ago, and it was actually the battle where the Jundar finally lost. So, the the lore idea behind these guys having Jundar shields is that they dug up the shields and possibly learned to craft them themselves from, like, the old war site. And I thought, that was nifty. See, not every decision I make is based on, like, making the game harder. Most of them are, but not all. Your men are fleeing, lizard band sergeant. Isn't it sad? Yes, it's terribly sad. Alright, guys, get out of here. I know you've got the dexterity. Move it. Move it, move it, move it. Goodbye. Thanks for playing. Tell your friends. To leave us alone. Hey, we got the Jundar shield. See? Here's... So impressed with my story and my world building skills. As if I can claim that in a world that was n not made by me at all. It's fine. It's whatever. We're not worried about it. We're gonna follow this rift in the ground. Even though I'm pretty sure there's nothing along it. The swamp is a very confusing place, and one I've been over. Just enough times to almost make sense of it. There's like the opening area with like the Chaos Scout and there's a couple ridges on either side. And some of them have trolls and some of them you think they have trolls and some of them have zombies. <clears throat> then you go over like a mountainous dip and there's this one valley. And it's kind of lumpy and confusing and all looks the same. Then you go over another lip, and you're down into, like, the, the deepest part of the swamp. Which is actually a lot more open, and there's fewer trees, and you can see a bit further. That section is a little easier to navigate, because there's a bunch of rivers that break it up into pieces. And, like, as long as you keep track of which rivers you have or have not crossed, you'll know you're exploring it in chunks properly. But even then, like I said before... The encounters are so sparse, and there are so few treasures, that it's really not worthwhile to try and comb the swamp. And I am definitely going to be trying to just connect the dots, rather than make sure I got everything with meticulous precision. Especially now that I'm repeating all this nonsense. And I can see the gameplay footage on my OPS window off to the side there, so I know it's actually recording this time. Fool me once game, shame on me. Or no, fool me once it's shame on you, fool me twice it's shame on me. Whatever! Die, zombie! Ah! I'm gonna have to toughen these zombies back up. They should not be taking 60 damage. I think they should be taking more than what they used to in the original game, because they were so absurdly tanky. But... They shouldn't be taking that much damage. I might have to give it a little bit of thought about whether I want to change them at all. It's like, usually I don't want to interfere with the enemy's gimmicks too much. I think they're fine as they are for the most part, and even as boring as the zombies are, at least their gimmick makes sense for them. They, they should just be like walls of flesh that you have to tear down before they rip you to shreds yourself. They are a little more potent in Aiden Plus than they were in the original. Although I didn't change their weapons or anything too much, I, I did adjust, like, the type of damage they deal. They used to just do straight physical damage, but now they do necrotic damage, so they override physical resistance and hit a little harder than they previously did. And the larger variant of them, the Plague Zombies, 
they were always poisonous, but now they're poisonous stronger, and the ticks will do three damage per round rather than just one. Which isn't terrible, but it's not bad. I mean, it was so negligible in the original that it was barely a factor at all. But now it actually might worth be while. Or, well, words. Now it might actually be worthwhile to dispel their poison. Under other circumstances. I would never do that. Why would I waste experience on remove poison when I know all the best spells and where to get them? Go away, lizard men. Go away. Nisa, are you close enough to whack this guy? I bet you're not. Oh, you're not. What a loser. Are you close enough to heal Brenna? No. Close enough to heal Rada. Go heal Rada. She couldn't heal you, but that means, doesn't mean you can't heal her. Yeah. Alright, Rada. Go finish this guy. Maybe we'll get lucky and actually get the Dragon Fang off him. That would be great. It didn't happen in my hour-long discussion with the uh, broken recording. So I'm kind of happy to be getting more chances to get them. Even though the Chaos Thorn is technically better, I still want it. You know? Can you understand that feel? Uh, I could just not waste these turns and heal people. Where would my friends go? They're all over there. Nathan, you're not close enough to heal them, are you? You're not close enough to heal anyone. Oh, maybe Alaron? Oh, you are. You are. You can heal Alaron. Whack. Just smack him in the face with your staff and he heals better. Goodbye, lizard man. Oh, I just gotta wait for the sergeant. Brenna needs healed too. Heal Brenna. Not anyone else. Only you. You're the one who recovers after combat because of your ring of healing. Your ring of breaking the game. Go away, lizard man. Oh, he's not going? Really? He's gonna make us actually do this? Don't be like that guy. Come on. Go away. Run. Run, you fool. We'll kill you if you don't. Yeah, he's running. He just needed a little encouragement. Bye-bye. Dragon Fang. Dragon Fang. Oh, I get it. No. When will we ever? I'm mildly lost. Uh, swamp. So confusing. Pretty sure the troll was over there that I killed. Uh. Um. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Where am I? Wait, is this is this the main thoroughfare? Could it be? Looks like it. Uh, sorry, I thought I heard somebody, but I did not. It was my own footsteps fooling me. Ah, okay, no, over here was where the troll was. Let's see if that other troll is up on the hill now, or if he's still playing pranks by not existing. He's supposed to just be right up here. Eh, I'm not seeing anybody. Very strange. Where did the troll go? Could its life be attached to another enemy party somewhere? Some encounters are like that. I pointed out two of them on the road to Aramon. Well, four of them if you count and involve all involved enemy parties, rather. But eh, it's fine. It's whatever. We're just going to go. We're just going to go for it. It's the swamp. It's big and confusing and boring. You don't want to spend too long here. In a way, all this big open space works to the player's advantage. Because since there are so few enemy encounters, you can cut through the place pretty quickly and easily without running into anything. Of course, I want to run into things because I'm determined to kill them all. But that's probably just not going to happen, honestly. I'm going to miss something out here somewhere. Huh? Oh, zombie? I think there's a zombie nearby. Zombie! Zombie? I don't see one. 
Oh no. Over here, perhaps? Zombies. I know this place is crawling with you. There's the zombie. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. It's getting late. Oh, here's like the, the undead combo battle. There are two new enemies on the field right now. Well, I think this is the first time we've seen a plague zombie as well. But I already told you about them. They're just bigger zombies with too much health and they're poisonous. We've got the skeleton warrior there brandishing his ice stiletto. That does mean he has a chance of insta-killing you, basically. But now that the spell star can be freely learned by anyone, as it rightly should be, that's a lot less of an issue than it once was. And there's the giant skeleton next to him, who now has a tower shield for protection, and his weapon of choice is no longer the maul, but rather the poleaxe. Yes, it's... We finally found it, guys. This is where the poleaxe ended up. And here's the thing about that. Uh, poleaxes used to, used to be wielded by the lizard men, and mauls used to be wielded by the giant skeletons, so they basically just traded weapons. Oh, and yes, the skeletons have spells now, and the giant skeletons' party trick is crushing death. I figured if any enemy was going to have their spell be a giant skeletal hand that crushes its victim, it might as well be the giant skeleton. And I don't remember if that little skeleton got a turn yet, but he casts Spirit Shield whenever he does. Eh. Bonked, zombie. Anyway. If I had not found the Chaos Mall so luckily when I did on Namer's Isle, I would definitely be upgrading to the Polax as soon as it became available. Because it is, bar none, the strongest non-enchanted weapon in this game. Its stats are something like uh, 45 accuracy and 6 power, I want to say. And to put that in perspective, the Chaos Maul is only one level, or power level higher than that. It's a 7 instead of a 6. So the Polax is definitely bad news, and it's a stronger weapon than these guys used to, or were using before, which is just as well, because these things show up much further into the game than lizard men do. I actually thought that they didn't show up until Shamsuk's Tower, but there's this one encounter where you can find a singular giant skeleton, and there might be others around in like the hills and swamp, but I'm not really sure. We'll find out if we run into any of them, you know? But yeah, we're just too dexterous for all these guys, they just don't stand a chance. Hard to tell if that's something I should correct or not. I kind of want to subject Aiden Plus to one of my challenge runs before I go dicking around with stats too much. I did raise all the skeletons' levels. That much is true. I believe I mentioned that before. I think the giant ones might even be level 25 or something. But level only accounts for so much in this game. Just like stats only account for so much too. It's a delicate balance, but it works. <laughs> Here's a plague zombie. Hello, sir. And I believe this one has the third skeleton variant right over there. Is that a skeleton archer? Looks like it. It's kind of dark. Brenna, could you lighten up the battlefield so we can get a closer look at our opponents? Like the other variants of skeletons, skeleton archers also have their new spell, and it's an especially annoying one. You'll see it as soon as he gets a turn. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gone yet, but I'm also not used to being this quick normally. Unless we scare him off, he's going to use it. Are you going to chicken out skeleton archer, or are you going to show the good people what you are now capable of? I guess we'll find out in a minute here. Zombie fleas? Zombie fleas? Plague zombie fleas? Skeleton archer? Oh, he did the thing! 
See, he's got cheat death. That's his shtick. In case you don't know how cheat death works, it prevents the target from dying to an attack once. So, like, if a hit would have been fatal for an enemy, they would just survive that hit, and you would have to hit them again. This gives skeleton archers more staying power, as well as all their allies. Like, if I was trying to kill that plague zombie, he would take one more hit on top of all his other hits, and it would be extremely annoying. And if I hadn't gotten to that skeleton archer in time, he would have cast it on himself and all his allies. And whenever there's groups of more of them, it can actually be quite problematic. But yeah, it's a simple trick, but it's good for them. And it helps these um, mid-slash-late-game battles be a little more interesting. Because you can't just dunk on the monsters instantly. There's a chance they'll get another turn before you do. <clears throat> and that's all the more they can really hope for. Let's see, what else is out here? Uh, there is actually a fourth type of skeleton that we'll be seeing in this swamp. I was unaware that they existed originally, because it was another one of those cases where... Oh, what am I trying to say? It was another one of those cases where the monster had the same name as he, another monster of the same type. So like, there were skeleton warriors, and there were uh, regular skeletons, but they were both just called skeleton. And I don't know if they even had different weapons, I think? Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure the regular s skeletons do not have weapons, they're unarmed, they just slap you with their hands, and the Skeleton Warriors, their distinction is they actually have the Warrior skill. I did not know that before I renamed them, but they also have, like, swords and shields. But anyway, there's only one fight I know of for sure that features the second type of skeleton prominently, and then there might be some stragglers in other parts of the game, but actually, we'll just have to see where they show up, because I don't freaking remember. Dark bats are annoying. Why did I decide to fight them this way? Now they're just chewing us up. At least we're gonna we're gonna be camping in a minute here, so I'm not too terribly worried. I need Brennan to get a turn so I can try to scare them away. Lunar enemies, am I right? Of course I'm right, because that's what they are. It's a statement of fact, not an opinion. Although the implication of the statement was that lunar enemies are so annoying because they can't be scared with aura of death. You have to use aura of wrath. Will you go away, bats? Will you please just leave? That one did. How about you too, buddy? How about you just get on out of here real while you've caught on fire? He's almost there. Uh... Bats are so flimsy, I honestly don't know if it would have been faster that way or to just hit them to death. Whatever. That's fine and dandy. I'm going to camp. Hey, more spice. Ooh, spices. Camp. Hooray. I think I missed one of my herb piles. There was one near the Minotaurs that I didn't get, I don't think. Next time I find an herb pile, though, I think I'm going to have to make some curing potions so as not to waste the herbs. Alright. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm confident that there are enemies out here I haven't killed yet. But I don't remember exactly where they are. And I don't feel like hunting them down. So we're just going to keep going. I think that was the last of the, the second layer. And now we're on the third with the rivers. Uh, 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 this is the commentary now. I'm terribly sorry. Is there a thing over here? I saw the map load in for a second there. What's over here? Let me just go all the way over here. There's a treasure I know that is somewhere close to this wall. Unless I've passed it, which is entirely possible. I think I've passed it because I'm certain it was well before this river. 
Wiver? River. May I hear the rivers that we're walking away from and you can't see us, I'm talking about them. Hello, skeleton.